and welcome to the Business Leader Series sponsored by SEMA. We have a very special and eminent guest with us, Mrs. Dashma Karna Ratna. Uh, she has diverse experience in corporate finance, strategy, business development, and sustainability in MNCs and conglomerates. Uh, she's a fellow member from the Chartered Institute of Management Accountants and holds three other memberships from different diverse fields. We're truly honored and privileged to have you today with us. Uh, my first question is, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, your professional journey from where you started to where you are now, and how SEMA as a professional qualification has supported you. Uh, like most Sri Lankans, um, I was expected to become a doctor. Uh, so I pursued biology, uh, medical, uh, hoping to go into medical college. But once I sat for my A-levels, I knew I won't get the cutoff marks and uh, I didn't want to try again. Um, and I didn't want to burden my parents to, to send me to a foreign uh, university, etc., etc. So uh, my husband, then childhood sweetheart, uh, told me, why not SIMA? Um, and then uh, I think I started my SIMA in 1999. Um, and it's been a wonderful journey since then because SIMA uh, doesn't produce a management accountant but actually a business partner. And businesses need not financial accountants and management accountants but people who would give solutions and partner them in the strategy or the vision the organization pursues. Um, so SIMA makes us the quintessential professional for all seasons and in today's dynamic world this, is, this comes as a very important qualification and a set of tools, set of skills. Now, speaking about female representation, especially at board levels, globally as well as in Sri Lanka, the numbers are quite less. What do you see as significant barriers for this to happen? And what are solutions that you would recommend to overcome this? Uh, so women representation in labor, globally is a challenge. Uh, here in Sri Lanka, um, yes, the numbers very much need to improve. There is improvement. However, if, uh, as we all know, uh, many ladies come out of university and they actually um, lead the pack in terms of results, in terms of numbers. However, you find less female coming into jobs and more so uh, in maritime logistics and freight sector because uh, it's a lot of stereotyping. A lot of people think when you work uh, in the port, you have to uh, have good stature and be able to carry heavy things, which is not correct. And working hours, shift systems have all been changed to bring in more and more female into the workforce. Uh, yet, um, it's actually the stereotyping even coming from university to the society, which, de which defines that uh, these jobs are not suitable for women, but actually it's a blue ocean out there and many opportunities are there. Even in my organization, the percentage is very impressive, percentage of women, the representation of women in leadership roles. However, when uh, we put out job opportunities, uh, we notice that most women are not applying for jobs. Um, it's quite ironic here in Sri Lanka, the underprivileged, they leave the women, leave their home and their families and go in search of a better horizon for their family. Sometimes it's a mirage and when they come back, they come back to dysfunctional homes and broken families. And the privileged um, who have got free education, uh, very good results at university, they choose to stay back home and look after their children, which is good. You're investing into the future of the country, but you're limiting your knowledge and skills to your two children or if, if lucky three children. Uh, I think the country uh, needs all hands on deck and uh, women is one of the other resources that we really need to tap into. Now with the maritime and logistics sector being a key driver of Sri Lanka's economy, what are your predictions for the industry and the direction that the industry should follow? Uh, thankful to the God-given location of Port of Colombo, the strategic location, um, and its close proximity to India and Bangladesh, um, we continue to be resilient. Um, if you look at the Port of Colombo's growth in the last 20 years or 15 years, compound annual growth rate has been 15%. It 
yes, currently year on year, there's a slight decline in growth. And that is only natural because there is a global economic slowdown. People are consuming less, buying less, etc. Um, however, Port of Colombo, just like an airport, is the, is the nerve center for the rest of the industry. So when you say maritime logistics, it's maritime freight logistics. The entire supply chain gets impacted. So um, while the Port of Colombo grows or um, performs well, because of its strategic location and its benchmark um, standards. Uh, it is important that there is proper facilitation in terms of infrastructure, enhancement of capacity at the Port of Colombo at the right time. Uh, we have East Container Terminal and West Container Terminal uh, being added. Uh, however, these uh, need to uh, come up much faster. Uh, and along with that, the ancillary services, the tugs, the navigation, uh, all of those facilities need to be enhanced because once a port and airport grows, along with it comes activity and economic um, reju rejuvenation happens along with it. So it is very important that we invest in our ports and our airports um, intensely. Now, give us your opinion about the country situation at present. Um, how do we overcome this economic crisis in your perspective? So uh, Sri Lanka needs forex. Um, so for us to get the forex that we need, it's important that we export. Uh, we export goods or services. So when, it, we, when we talk about exporting goods, um, we have our rudiment exports, our basic exports. Maybe we have to go back to that and um, see how we can improve our yield. Uh, improve the, in, enhance the value additions that we do, uh, move away from traditional methods. Uh, when we talk about export of services, uh, yes, you have tourism. Um, in terms of ports also, there's export of services. When we handle transshipment, it's considered an export of services. And then the workforce that leaves Sri Lanka and brings forex. Uh, in terms of maritime, um, the port activities, etc., is governed by maritime policy. Yes, we have best in class terminals, but it is the port policy or the maritime policy that holds us back. The maritime policy must transcend beyond uh, whichever government, whichever leadership that comes into the port, etc., etc. Uh, Sri Lanka has good talent, uh, in fact, living legends, um, leaders who have held. Um, uh, good roles in professional bodies, global professional bodies. These people should be matched uh, to make the right policy. So there is, a, there is a supply and then there is a demand and we need to match the right people at the right place. Governance plays a big role. Uh, where there is corruption, we will not be efficient. Wherever there is no equal playing field, um, we will again fail because the best person or the best business case or the best uh, organization must be given the opportunity and if we don't allow that to come and take its rightful place then uh, as an organization as a country as even as the industry we fail uh, if we look at sri lanka yes because of our location uh, we have a good product however if we had to take it to a different level to make it um, a benchmark port beyond south asia uh, beyond the Indian Ocean. If you are to become like a Shanghai or Port of Shanghai or Singapore, uh, we need to have the right capacity. We need to have the, have the right investment and it has to be timely. Um, let's look at manufacturing. Uh, I don't believe that Sri Lanka can manufacture everything we need within Sri Lanka. Uh, if you look at apparels, maybe we can manufacture um, may, may, we may still need to import 60%, but if we manufacture something here, like maybe the dyeing, the, the yarn, if we can do the fabric here, there's backward integration. So we can reduce the import dominant uh, quality of Sri Lanka. Last but not least, what do you like to do outside of work uh, for personal well-being and relaxation purposes? Mm, what I like most is to play Lego with my son. However, the uh, weekend is something that I really look forward to. Uh, in maritime logistics and freight, it's sometimes a 24-7 day job. 
Uh, but I try to carve out that time for my family uh, because I strongly believe that uh, family plays a big part in, in the future of the country, in future of uh, a society. Uh, so Sunday is our fun day and uh, we, we put in a lot of um, effort to make it fun. Uh, so I, I, Ransit and I, bo we both believe that uh, children have to have the right values. So we start the day with by going to church, uh, giving back to the community uh, with various ministries of the church. Um, and then it's uh, a nice Sunday lunch. And then, of course, we go and visit our parents because they've sacrificed much for us and we need to have the time um, to spend with them.